Exercise 13, SOLIDWORKS 2018. In this exercise, we're going to take a look at one method of creating a bottle using the loft tool. Uh, that Basically, we're going to try and recreate what you see there. A couple other things we'll see. Uh, we'll do a cut sweep to make that groove around the sides of the bottle. And then we'll, I'll show you how to put a thread in as well as a thread lead in. And we'll try shelling it and doing a couple other little things here. So let's begin. First of all, let's go to File New. Make sure part is selected and hit OK. And go ahead and select. What we're going to do is draw the bottom of the bottle on the top plane. So select the top plane, start a sketch. Take your line tool and just uh, infer to the origin and click and drag across like so. Make sure that it's inferring to the origin. And let's go ahead and put some dimensions in here. We're going to go ahead and make this six inches across. And we're going to have it offset a little bit. So we're going to dimension to the origin, to the left edge. And we'll make that uh, approximately 2.25. All right, now go ahead and go up to your spline tool. Now, if you hit the little arrow to the right of spline tool, there's a couple different types of splines. There's the typical spline up here, which is like an interpolated spline where you're just putting points on and creating a spline. But there's also the style spline, which is really a fabulous tool, and we're going to use that. If you want to see this bottle made using uh, the older method with like the interpolated spline, you can actually watch the 2012-2013 version of this same video exercise. Just type in E13-2012, and you'll be able to see the uh, older way. Go ahead and click on Style Spline, and now select this point. Click and drag it straight up, and make sure you get the little vertical symbol. What this is going to do, it's going to make sure that it's essentially... Um, it will be eventually mirrored over to the other side, and this is going to help make it keep it tangent. So just uh, drag this up a little bit. And this is a freeform design project. You're going to have some liberty here to kind of make the bottle design however you like. In the actual training guide on vertani1.com, V E R T A N is an Nancy U X 1.com, and under SOLIDWORKS Advanced Exercise 13, you could actually see the dimensions for a bottle, and you could use those if you really want to. Uh, this is a little bit different bottle than what I currently have in the book. I have to update the book, though. Okay, so just drag that up a little bit like where I have it. Click, and now follow it along. You're going to go about the same distance, but in maybe about a 45-ish degree angle. Click, and again, this is just um, a freeform bottle, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Click here, and then move this all the way to the other side, and then we're going to go ahead and get near that, that other end and click. And then directly above it, click, and then connect it. Click. Now, if you don't do it perfectly, uh, at this point here, hit Escape on your keyboard, the upper left there. And don't worry, because you're going to have some flexibility here in terms of adjusting this. So you'll see you could grab these points and balloon this, or inflate it, or deflate it, however you like. So you could adjust those points. And if you want, you could also right-click, and you can in insert additional control vertices if you want, and then you just click where you want one. Okay, again, I'm not going to go into a lot of details on dimensions. This is somewhat freeform, so let's just leave it at that. Now, what we're going to do is mirror it across this, center li this line, but to mirror it across, we should make that a center line. So click on that line. Of course, I hit Escape a couple times before I did this. Click on that line, and you'll see right here, Construction Geometry. This will convert that from an object line to a construction line. Now, you could actually just move up here and click and drag an envelope or a fence around the entire geometry. Go up to the top here in your sketch tools to Mirror Entities, and it should mirror it to the other side. Now, even though those are inferring to tangency, we get somewhat of a smooth transition to be on the safe side. I always force a relationship between them. So here's what you could do. You could hold control, click on both of these splines, and then release control. And over on the left-hand side, you'll see tangent. Go ahead and select tangent for that. And then do the same over near this end. Click on this, hold control, select that. 
and go with tangent again. And it will smooth it out, making a nice transition between the two sides. Otherwise, you might have sharp ends there. Okay, now, also, if you did want to make any adjustments, you could grab these points, and you'll see because we mirrored it across, there's a symmetric relationship on both sides. So whatever change you make to one will be ad adopted to the other. Go ahead and hit the Rebuild button here, or Exit Sketch, either or is fine. And we are done with that bottom of the bottle. Now what we're going to do is click on the top plane one time, and release it, move your pointer over here, and maybe rotate this a little bit, or you could hit your space bar and go to the isometric polygon here, or isometric up there. Now I want to show you a little trick to offset the plane. Hold Control, grab this thin blue line with your pointer and your mouse button selected, drag it up, and it should automatically, depends on how fast your computer is, it should automatically offset a plane. And we want it to go upward. That's why I have it go, go isometric. And over here on the left, let's make this 10 inches in height. Okay, now our plane should be floating up above that. If you don't see your plane, you could go to View, Hide Show, and make sure Planes is turned on. Otherwise, hit the F key. It might just be out of the, outside of the screen. Okay, now let's go ahead and select that plane on top there and start a sketch. Hit your space bar and go to the top view orientation. And if yours is rotated 90 degrees, remember you could always do this. If you hold the Alt key down next to your space bar, hold it down, hit your left or right arrow keys that will rotate in 15 degree increments until you get it to whatever orientation you prefer. Okay, at this point now, we're going to go ahead and make the top of the bottle. So again, let's use that same technique. Take the line tool, and on this line, notice I'm not at the very end because the top is going to be smaller than the bottom. Drag this across and just let it float there. And let's add uh, some smart dimensions here. Click and add a dimension. We will make this uh, three inches, and then go ahead and dimension from this top point to the origin, and we'll make that uh, 1.75. All right, now we could go back to Style Spline, and right here, click and drag it straight across so you get that little vertical symbol to the right of your pointer. Click, drag this out, and follow a contour if you like, or it's really up to you. Uh, you could infer to this again. It might not be the easiest to infer to. Just get it close and click and then hit escape. And now, again, you could adjust this in any way you prefer. I actually want to make it a bit bigger. I think it's a little too small. So I'm going to inflate it. Okay. Now, again, we could click on this line and change it to a construction line. Honestly, we could have just drawn center lines initially. Um, it didn't really matter. Just wanted to show you the trick for converting a line to a center line, that's all. Okay, now let's mirror this across. Now the trick, again, is to click and drag a fence to surround the geometry and click on Mirror Entities. Note that uh, Mirror Entities doesn't always work when there's additional center lines, but in this case, these are not, it's not looking at that, that much of an issue. Okay, let's um, add tangency between those two ends. So click here, hold Control and select here, and make sure it's tangent. And then the same down here, uh, hit a, uh, click somewhere off of it, and then controls, oops, accidentally exited the sketch. When the sketch turns gray like that, if you don't know this already, it means that you exited the sketch. So to reaccess the sketch, you could do two things. Sometimes this doesn't always work, though. If you double click, it will usually reaccess the sketch that you're double clicking on. Or you could right click, and you'll find the uh, uh, enter sketch, uh, the uh, edit sketch, I should say. Okay, let's go ahead and do this. Click on this and hold Control, select that. And there's a couple other ways to edit a sketch as well from the feature tree. But select Tangency and Apply. All right, if you wanted to, you could even make this a little bit bigger at this point. Let's say we wanted this to be 4 inches. Double click on that 3, change it to 4. Yeah, that's a little bit too far. I'm going to make it 3.5. 
just seems a little small. There we go. Okay, so now that we have that done, you could go ahead and hit rebuild up here or exit sketch, either or. And you could hide this plane. You could click on it, find the eyeball, hide it. Now let's go to the front plane and start a sketch. And for this, um, isometric is okay, I suppose. Eh, I don't really like that too much. Eh, this is pretty good. Just rotate it to where you can see both tops and bottoms. Isometric is pretty decent for this. And now you could use the style spline, but this one I like just the ordinary spline for. We're going to draw the front of the bottle, and it's just going to be a very slight bow in it. So I'm going to click on that. And then right in the middle here somewhere going straight out, I'm going to click and then I'm going to connect it to that point there and then hit escape. Now do the same, click on the spline again and over here, let's do the same, let's have it bow out a little bit and click and then hit escape and then go normal to uh, actually um, put a front. Now, the, the reason we went to front is because here you could really see the characteristics of the bottle. And it, you might want to flatten that curve a little bit. And you might want to bring this one out a little bit. So you could adjust them that way. You could also right-click and insert a spline point. And then drag it in and give yourself more of a curvature on it. And style the bottle that way. I'm going to hit undo there. I'm going to have mine pretty basic. I'll even get rid of that completely. Okay, uh, sometimes less is better. All right, so now that we have that geometry, we could go ahead and hit rebuild. And now it's time to loft this. So let's go to the features tab, go to lofted boss base. And the first thing it's looking for are the profile. So click on this profile at the bottom, this profile at the top. Then click in this box here next to the purple stripe for guide curves and select both guide curves. Now what I did here is a mistake is um, the, the guide curves needed to be in independent sketches and I don't think I did that. Let's just verify. I did not. And so here you could see a very important lesson. The guide curves should be in their own uh, sketches. So let's cancel this out. And now you get to see how to edit and fix something like this, which is excellent lesson. So click on this and go to edit sketch, so that last sketch. And let's delete that one. Click on that one at the end and hit delete on your keyboard. And now you can just hit rebuild. And what we really need to do, we should add four sketches. So now we again select the front plane, start a new sketch, and repeat what we did before. Go to the spline tool, connect this point here. Have a bow out a little bit and then connect to that point there and then hit escape. Verify it from the front view orientation or control one. And if you want to bow that out a little bit again, go right ahead. Hit the rebuild button and now we could go back to work. Go to lofted boss base, select both profiles, at the top and bottom. Now you could go to guide curves and select each guide curve independently and then hit the green check. All right, so now you can see we have our shape. What we're going to do next is we're going to learn how to put a special type of fillet on here. First of all, let's put an ordinary fillet on here and see what happens. So over here, um, the typical circular profile is what we go with. And let's say we wanted a 0.25 fillet and we select the bottom edge. and. Let's actually go a little bit, let's go with 0.35. Okay. Now looking at it, it doesn't look all that bad, um, but that could be a little misleading. Let's take a look with the analysis tools that we have built in here. If you go to evaluate, you have two, uh, there's actually several options for analyzing surfaces. So there's zebra stripe. And when we analyze the surface, for the most part, the body as a whole looks really good. The zebra stripes are nice and curvatured. They're not really, but they're not consistency sake wise. They're not um, all the same size. However, if we look carefully at that fillet, we can see they're really all consistent in size. There's not 
much of a spanning and there's a harsh transition look at this it goes from this big uh, stripe to nothing I mean just it goes flat and even though in real life uh, it, you might not see this at from one perspective most people pick up on it and it looks unpleasant and so what they have is they have curvature continuous or what's known as G2 or G2 surfacing uh, ability here or at least filleting so let's um, but before we do that though you can turn off zebra stripe go to curvature and here radius of curvature indicates that it's a consistent 0.35 which is what we specified which that's it but let's now leave curvature on you can turn both on it's just a little overwhelming uh, but let's go to fill it in my opinion and let's go to edit feature now let's change that remember that was one consistent color let's change it from circular to curvature continuous which is otherwise known as G2 or C2 depending upon the CAD system and now look at that the fillet um, don't pay too much attention to those little facets that occurs due to the facet faceting of the model and how high of a level I had it set to um, with my graphics card so anyway but look at this it's a nice smooth color transition versus one solid color as we move our pointer over the surface you'll see radius of curvature varies and it gives it a more pleasant appearance more natural appearance versus a harsh transition so when you design an automobile for example um, you might want to go with G2 or curvature continuous as they call it here actually it's referred to as C2 okay so that being said we could go ahead and put one at the top we won't put one quite as large up there but let's go back to the features and fill it we'll leave it at curvature continuous and let's set it to only 0.125 and select that top edge hit the green check okay and the red doesn't matter that's just again the curvature is getting a little tight that's all um, in this case it's not a warning of any sort all right now what we want to do is put that big cutout in here so we could turn off go back to evaluate and turn off curvature and let's select the front plane and start a sketch hit your spacebar and go to the front view orientation now what we want is we want a handle section on the back and so we're going to put in this interesting feature that sweeps through and gouges into it making this uh, kind of a wave form so let's for this we could actually use the spline tool the ordinary spline and have it outside of the actual model don't put it on the edge here it doesn't always work right if you do that so have it just slightly outside click and again you could do this however you like and I'm gonna make the handle section kind of come down to here and click all right now notice I didn't use many points if uh, you could always adjust these and move them wherever you like this is my handle and now what we can do and actually I might move it down I'm gonna grab it move it down a little bit all right now what we want to do is we want to create an edge for a track or a guide rail or path referred to here so to do this we go to tools uh, actually insert curve and split line uh, in this case um, we want to make sure faces to split we'll select this face and you could hit the green check mark and you'll see it should split that surface so now there's actually two surfaces here and here split that up but we really want that just for the guide rail that's all the way around the model so with that being said select the front plane start a sketch and now go to the front view orientation and let's draw a circle now you could get in there at that point it's a little hard to get to that orange dot sometimes if just get close to it it doesn't have to be right on it and drag this circle out and I'm gonna go ahead and dimension mine at 1.25 now because our bottles are all a little bit different you might have to change yours it might, that might be too too big or too whatever okay now hit rebuild and let's go to features and find swept cut 
select the circle, and then select the split line. And you'll see the preview come around here. Go ahead and hit the green check mark, and then click somewhere on the screen. Now, here it got a little tight, and I didn't get that on my last model I made, so it could, could cause issues when we're trying to fill it a little later. So I'm actually going to double, uh, I'm going to go into the swept cut here, the little arrows to the left of it, and edit that sketch. And I'm just going to make mine one inch, hoping that that corrects it. And not quite. I might have to adjust the curvature. There's a number of things you could do. You could go into the split line and edit that sketch and perhaps have it drop out a little bit less. Or you have these handles, which you could adjust that too. And maybe not have this come up so dramatically. Okay, it's staying there. I'm just going to go with it. I think I'm going to be okay. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we, we could go ahead and fill it to some of this. So we could go to the Fillet tool, and I was going to just select the whole face, but that's all right. We'll just select the edges, and it looks like it's filleting it, so it's still adequate. Okay, now we're going to put a, um, a neck on the bottle here, and then put a thread on it. So select your... In this case, um, well, before we do that, actually, we're going to put a little, give it a little bit more character. Eh, no, we won't. Never mind. Um, we'll just go ahead and select this top face and start a sketch. And go normal to the top view orientation. And I don't know if we necessarily want to lock it in at the origin. If it, if it looks good on yours, go for it. But drag this out so it stays within the boundaries of the top plane. We could go in and dimension it. Again, everyone's is a little bit different, but maybe 1.5 or 1.25 or 1 inch will work for you, whatever fits in there. And now go to Features and Extrude Boss, and let's go about um, 0.75, I think. Might do the trick. Yeah, that looks good. All right. Now, you might be tempted to shell it right now, and you could do that. However, uh, with the sweep, we might run into some issues. Um, actually, let's go, let's go for it. Let's try shelling it. Go to the Shell tool, and the shell may not always work, by the way. Sometimes when I used to do design bottles years ago, I've been using SolidWorks for 21 years now, and sometimes we would have to model in the shell, like literally model the exact replica of the bottle, but removing features so we actually had the inside of whatever we're, whatever plastic part or whatever we we're designing. So just be aware, shell works really well, but when you get a complex part, it's not always going to be successful, and there's little tricks to working with that. Okay, but let's set it to 0.03 and click on this surface on the top and the green check mark. Now, when you get this little message, um, it could be bad but sometimes it might actually still work. Uh, but if it's a plastic part that's going to be molded, you might have some problems. With a bottle, you typically don't need to shell it other than to get the volume of what's inside. Um, but with other parts, this could be a problem when you try and make a mold inside SolidWorks with it. So let's go ahead and hit the green check. And you'll see it still worked. And it's okay for what we want here but um, needless to say, it's not always the most optimum thing to do. Now, if you want to just verify what it looks like in your bottle, click on Section View here, and now you can see inside. Now, a lot of times you do multi-thickness shells too, and that is covered in uh, exercise in the next bottle exercise in the book, which I believe is E19 or 18 or something like that. I can't remember exactly which one. I will make a video for that soon. I, if you want, you can watch the old video for 2013, 2012-2013. Okay, anyhow, uh, you could cancel that section view. The way to turn it off is to click on it again if you still are in section view. Okay, so now that we have this, I'm going to go ahead and we want to show you how to put a thread in on the bottle. So go up here to the top and select this top face 
and go over here to reference geometry and plane. Now the plane, we want to set it to point 0.1 and flip the offset so it's going below the surface. This is because a thread on a bottle typically doesn't start at the very top. It starts a little bit below it. We're going with a hundred thousandths in this case. So hit the green check mark. Now there is a thread tool for bolts and things like that. I haven't tested it for these types of complex threads, like you would see like a knuckle thread or unique threads. Um, it works great for typical bolt threads, but this is a bottle thread, so it's a little different. So you, um, you could try it. Um, in my future videos, I will, I'm going to give it a, a, an attempt, but uh, this way still works. Okay, so anyhow, let's go ahead and select that plane now and start a sketch on it. Select the outer edge of the diameter of the neck and hit Convert Entities, and it will project a circle of the same size onto the plane you're sketching. This is so we could sweep a thread off of it or pull a thread off of it. So now watch this. You go to Insert, Curve, Helix Spiral. Now make sure on your Helix Spiral here, mine is actually a pretty good fit. Um, the pitch, let's make it 0.2. Revolutions is pretty good at 2. The start angle, let's see, maybe 90 degrees might be better. Um, I might want it to start over here on the, uh, on the back side for molding purposes. Uh, it depends. Ask your the mold maker for this. The blow mold maker. Okay, so that seems to work really well. If yours needs to be adjusted, notice you could grab this little arrow and drag it up or down. You could put in per parameters in here as well. There's also the option for tapered helix, which we don't want to use, so for like national pipe threads and things like that. There's also, you can define it by height and revolution, height and pitch, and spiral. And spiral is a two-dimensional, kind of like a heater coil on an oven that's flat. I could show that to you really quick here. That's what it looks like, and of course that's not what we want, but we're going to go with pitch and revolution, put in these parameters. If they work, if not, you could adjust them. And now hit the green check mark. We could actually hide this plane just to get it out of the way. And now what we want to do, you'll see, find the top end here of the helix spiral. Click near the end, but not on it. Like, see, not literally at the end point, just near it. So the whole thing glows in orange. Click. And now you could go up here to sketch and start a sketch on it and it creates a sketch plane right at the end. Now click on that sketch plane. Actually, if you right click on it, uh, do we have a normal two option? I'm not seeing it. So just click on it and then hit your space bar and find this button, normal two, or control eight is the fast key. If you don't go normal two, you might draw it skewed because there's a slight, remember there's the pitch on the thread and this is angled, it's perpendicular to that pitch. So be aware of that. That's why you don't want to use like the front plane. Even though it looks like it's on the front plane, the front plane is flat. This has a slight angle, which I'll show it to you in a second. Okay, now let's draw in the thread profile. So for the thread profile, you always want to start, dig it in a little bit into the actual model. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw something that looks like it's like a tent on the side. I'm going to go to the dimension tool and dimension it, um, the overall height. We'll go with um, 0.125. And you could put other dimensions on here. I'm going to leave it kind of as is, but um, you know whatever your thread parameters are, enter those. And then over here, go to Sketch Fillet and set it to a very small 0.01, maybe even 0.005. You just put in those fillets and don't try and put those fillets in later after the thread is made. It's near impossible. It's just too complex to compute. So put them in here as sketches um, and then hit apply. All right, now that that's there, and again, I'm not fully defining it. If you want to fully define it, go ahead. You, 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 for production, you of course need to, but this is just a training exercise. All right, hit the green check, hit rebuild. And now let's hide this plane to click on this plane and hit hide. And now we could go to features 
and Sweat Boss Base. Select the thread profile and then the helix. And you should see it go all the way around. Hit the green check. All right, if it's inside here a little bit, that you might have just drawn it a little too deep inside. Um, what trick you could do, I'll show you in a little bit actually how to cut it out. But also, let's hide this thread, this blue thread, or find the helix actually in the feature tree and click on it and click on hide. We don't need to see that. All right, now I want to do a lead in. Now here's one really quick way, which is a little down and dirty. I don't like it, but um, for the bottom, it doesn't matter. We don't really need a real thread lead in other than maybe for aesthetics. Click on fill it and click on this edge. Now it will fail to fill at that edge. This might take a moment here. Um, we know it failed because we can't see a preview of it. So what you can do here is actually turn off tangent propagation on the left there, and now you can see it flattens it out. You can also fill it those with very small, like 0 0.01. You might even have to go a little smaller because that, ma that will match this radius. And just select this edge here, which I'm not getting it to work, so I'll just go with 0 0.07. Oh, that's too, way too big. Wow, it actually took the larger one. 0 0.007, sorry. And then you can select this one too. Just to smooth that out a little bit. Okay, here's the other method. <clears throat> the, a lead-in, this is going to look much nicer. And also, you might notice the tessellations, the faceting that occurs on the model. This is due to the uh, settings for graphics cards. And to adjust this, so it's smoother. Now, remember that. See all the, the facets? If you want to adjust this, you go to the gear up here, which is the options. And if you go to performance and go to image quality down here at the bottom, you'll see here shaded and draft quality. Drag this. Notice it says slower. The closer you get to this area, it's going to go slower. Um, for parts, it doesn't really make a difference if you have a any graphics card. It's going to work pretty well on an individual part unless it's super complex. But for assemblies, definitely keep this at a lower setting, especially like I have a laptop, and so it's going to it's very it's a resource uh, very uh, tough on the resources. Hit OK, and eh, it looks a little bit better, a little bit. But anyhow, okay. So now what we're going to do is here we're going to make a lead in. Select this face. Go to sketch, and so we start a sketch on it. And immediately, while it's still glowing, hit convert entities. That will project it, the edges as sketch entities. Get rid of this line here, because this is a partial ellipse, and that's no good to us. We want to revolve that around. So click on it and hit delete on your keyboard, just that one edge. And redraw a new line over it. So take the line tool and connect both ends there. Now go to center line. Now sometimes you could capture parallelism. I'm going to see if I can. I don't think I can. But out here somewhere, not too far from it, click and drag this out. Now you don't want to follow this line here because that's vertical. I know that because the little yellow box there. So skew it off of that just a little bit and then hit escape on your keyboard. Now hold control and select that line to the new line you drew over here and make those two parallel. And you could set a distance, but right now I'm not going to bother setting a distance between. Uh, we'll set a distance. Why not? Okay. Click on this to this. And between the two, we'll make it 0.2. Adjusting it will make the lead-in bigger. Making it smaller will make the lead-in smaller. So let's now go to Features, Revolve, Boss Base. You'll see it will want to revolve a full 360. We don't want that. Um, usually 60 degrees is a pretty good sweet spot for it. But you can see it's digging in a little bit there. You could grab this and drag it in until, until you don't get any of it. Uh, and it's still in there a little bit. That's okay. You might not be able to get it all the way in there. But make sure it's, you can see the shaded preview here looks good. Hit the green check. You might have to hit the flip direction button too on there. I forgot to show you. There's a little reverse direction if it's going the wrong way. Okay, now 
you'll see that it leaves a little artifact on the inside of the shell. If you don't want to see that, here's how. If you have any artifacts in here, you just select this face, start a sketch on it, select the inner edge, and hit Convert Entities, and you guessed it. You just want to extrude cut it. And you just extrude cut the same depth of the actual neck of the bottle. That clears out anything you have on the inside. So don't worry if you have a little bit going on there. So there you can see how to create lead-ins and things like that. And that concludes this exercise.